nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. To our broadcast. I am Roger L. Green, Senior Pastor and Founder of Prayer and Deliverance Worldwide Ministries. So glad we're able to come before you again, bring you the Word of God that will strengthen and encourage, motivate and inspire each one of you to continue to live for the Lord. We have a very interesting lesson on today and I am excited uh, because uh, our lesson is in uh, the book of Revelation, and every time I read the book, uh, God opens something new and exciting to me uh, concerning uh, the book. And so I'm excited to share it with you. So we're not going to prolong the hour. We're going to get right into the Word of God. If you would, turn in your Bibles to chapter 6 of the book of Revelation. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, uh, a part of the seven seals um, that are contained in chapter 6, and uh, but we're going to only discuss the first four of them on today of these seven seals. The first four of these seals uh, deals with the um, four horsemen of the apocalypse, and that's what we're going to talk about uh, today is uh, these four horsemen, and we're going to give you a working definition for the word apocalypse, and uh, you'll have some new terms that'll come up. Uh, another one will be harbinger. Uh, you'll, you'll have these two terms will come up in our lesson on today, but don't fear. We're going to clear them up in your head, in your mind, and you will be able to know them, all right? So let's look at the first eight verses of chapter six of the book of Revelation, all right? John said, I saw when the lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him. And he went forth, conquering and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, come and see. And I beheld and lo, a black horse and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, and hell followed with him, and power was given unto them over the part of the earth to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beast of the earth. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearing, doing, and reading of his word. This is concerning a prophecy of John and what he saw uh, during a vision that was given to him by God. Now, 
this book of Revelation uh, is attributed to the Apostle John. Uh, number one is because uh, he identifies himself as the writer four times in this particular book, even though there arose some controversy over whether or not John was the actual writer because there were other people whose name was John also. But we believe that it was John the Apostle because of all of the external evidence that lead to him, and he has now been generally accepted as the author of the book. Glory be to God. And so we uh, want to look at some of the characteristics of uh, John in this book. Uh, the book reveals that the author was a Jew, well-versed in uh, scripture, and he was a church leader, well acquainted with the seven churches of Asia, uh, which um, is now in the Western uh, world uh, called um, uh, Turkey and uh, Iraq and Iran and in that area uh, of, of that time. So John believed that the church or the Christian faith uh, would triumph over uh, the demon forces at work uh, in uh, the world on today. And so there is another um, uh, of force uh, that work in the world today uh, that John uh, wanted to make sure that we were aware of what was going on. This is a revelation that was given to John. So uh, the, the evidence points directly to the apostle. Uh, many believe that the book was written around uh, A.D. 95, and uh, so uh, John had been exiled at this time uh, to the Isle of Patmos. Uh, it's where he wrote uh, much of his uh, writings on today. And the reason John was exiled was for his activities uh, as a Christian missionary. And uh, so we have to understand that. So John believed that his vision uh, revealed things that uh, concerned the hereafter. Uh, in other words, uh, the close of the age, uh, the end of the millennium, uh, is what John uh, saw. And so he gave us as great a description as he could, uh, as well as explanation uh, for what he saw uh, in this vision. And this is what we need to pay attention to because it is uh, believed that God gave John a picture of what was to come in the hereafter, all right? And so many of us, we wonder, well, oh, what's going to happen when we die? You know, what happens to a man? And, and we'll come all uh, uh, tied up and enamored with, with those notions. But John gives us some some real information that we need to know uh, before the hereafter <laughs> gets here, all right? And so we want to look at that. So um, there is quite uh, an introduction to uh, this particular book. I could go on and on and on uh, with the introduction, but in the interest of time, uh, I want to uh, spare you some of the introduction and get directly uh, to the point that I want to discuss uh, during this uh, particular session, right? First of all, be advised that the lesson is about just the first four seals that are discussed in chapter 6 of the book of Revelation. Uh, there are seven seals in total, but the first four deal with the four horsemen of the apocalypse, all right? And so uh, as we discuss in these first four uh, of the seven seals, we want to focus on these horsemen because they represent the signs of the time of the apocalypse. Uh, this word apocalypse, all right? Get this into your theology. Apocalypse simply means final destruction of the earth, all right? It is considered the final judgment and destruction of the earth, all right? Now, there are going to be certain signs and indications of the event uh, that will take place. And it behooves us 
to be familiar with these uh, signs, with these events. Uh, and so um, there's another word that's going to come up in our discussion uh, that relates directly to that, which is called harbinger. A harbinger is a forerunner. Uh, it is a sign of something or someone that will come after. Uh, just like John the Baptist was a forerunner of Jesus Christ, he came uh, uh, to pave the way to announce the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, so uh, we could consider him to be a type of harbinger. Uh, and so as a result, uh, these are terms that you need to be familiar with when we are talking about the book of Revelation. All right? We got to go to break right now, but we'll be right back and we'll continue this discussion. Stay with us. God bless you. are back. Thank you for remaining with us. We are going to continue our discussion. Uh, I want to share with you that um, uh, something in our uh, a lesson on uh, last week or last Sunday, one or the other prompted this study because one of the uh, terms that was mentioned in that lesson, uh, pestilence, uh, is what uh, prompted it because uh, uh, one of these uh, riders of the uh, four horsemen uh, contain pestilence. And I wanted to make sure you, that you were familiar with uh, pestilence because pestilence is directly related to what is happening in the world on today. And we want to try to stay relevant uh, to the times in which we live because we don't know uh, the day nor the hour of the coming of the Son of Man. But we do know he's coming soon. And the songwriter said, it may be morning, it may be night or noon, but we know he's coming soon. All right, and so we have to prepare ourselves. He is giving us this opportunity uh, to repent and to get ourselves prepared uh, for the coming judgment. And so therefore, we cannot uh, miss discerning uh, the time that we live in. It is very important because uh, everybody is not saved. Everybody is not prepared uh, for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is a harbinger. This is a warning. Uh, this is a uh, forerunner uh, to inform you to get right with God and do it now down at the cross where he bled and died Get right with God and do it now. The Bible said, the day you hear my voice in this very book, Revelation, harden not your heart as the children of Israel did uh, in the wilderness and provoke God to his wrath. Glory be to God. You got to hear the word of God and respond to his word. It's very important that you keep that in mind. All right. So uh, this uh, word uh, pestilence uh, uh, means a fatal epidemic or pandemic like the bubonic plague that occurred around 1334 um, when 25 million people uh, died from the bubonic, bubonic plague in Europe and Asia. Uh, it uh, took out uh, roughly 33% of that continent uh, at the time. 
And so as a result, uh, pestilence is very, very significant to what we are facing now. There are a lot of people who are dying and have died uh, from uh, this uh, COVID-19 pandemic that we're experiencing now too. And so we have to understand that. But we want to make sure that in looking at our present time, we don't miss a very important signal uh, of events to come uh, concerning the hereafter that God had already revealed uh, in John's revelation. Glory be to God. And this is why the book is named Revelation is because the root of the word revelation is revealed. God revealed this to the apostle John for our hearing, I'll say. So we have to understand that, all right? So these uh, four horsemen are figures in uh, Christian faith that appear in the final book of Revelation, and there are Old Testament prophecies that had already prophesied concerning them in the book of Zechariah as well as Ezekiel, and uh, we're not going to get into, uh, into that then. But uh, it is where these men were identified and called uh, the punishments of God because of their, their prophecies, right? And so keep in mind that the book of Revelation is a vision. It is a vision. Uh, and this entire book is highly symbolic and contains a lot of symbolism. And so we have to understand and learn how to interpret that symbolism and do the research. This is why a lot of people do not teach very much out of the book of Revelation because it is very symbolic and it requires a lot of in-depth study to understand and be able to teach uh, uh, what you gather from uh, this particular book. Uh, it requires a lot of intense uh, research and study because uh, you want to teach the truth and you have to teach the word. Uh, of God according to how it is written, all right? And so uh, because uh, we know that it is a vision, we know that God gave John the vision and John gave it to us, all right? Now in Revelation chapter 1, verse 10, John declares that he was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard a voice behind him, a great voice as of a trumpet. And then he uh, described uh, from that point what uh, God revealed to him uh, in uh, this particular vision, right? And so now we're going to get uh, right into uh, these four horsemen, uh, and we're going to talk about this first horseman. Uh, the first horseman uh, was the rider of a white horse, glory be to God, and he is carrying a bow, and given a crown as a figure of conquest or of, uh, of, of war or invoking uh, uh, pestilence, uh, depicting himself as it were, uh, as he were, uh, Christ himself. And uh, he is so um, uh, similar in character and nature and, and description uh, that he is a deceiver, uh, and many people will accept him and receive him as the Christ, but he is actually the Antichrist, uh, but he is disguised, and many will fall. Many will follow after him and, uh, and fall prey uh, to his devices and his deception and miss the, uh, uh, the rapture itself and uh, have to go through the great tribulation period. And the Bible said uh, anyone who does not accept the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior uh, will go through the great tribulation period. And so we have to understand that. Now, there are some things uh, that he has given us uh, to help us discern the Antichrist from the real Christ. The Bible tells us to try the spirit and see if it be of God. Because what you have to know is the devil cannot live a holy lifestyle. Uh, Satan cannot live holy. 
He can do a lot of other things, but the one thing that will separate him every time is holiness. This is the reason why we preach and teach and declare holiness in the church all the time so that you're able to distinguish the world from the things that pertain to Christ. Only those things that are holy that will pertain to Christ. If it doesn't have a holiness in it, it's not of God. <laughs> and so we have to uh, forsake those things and not receive those things as being holy in our practice of worship to God. And so this Antichrist will fool, as the Bible says, uh, even as it were the elect. In other words, if it was possible uh, to fool the elect, uh, the Antichrist would be the one that would have done so, all right? And so, uh, so you have to be, pay very close attention because of this deception, all right? The, the enemy is always a deceiver. He is a liar. He is the author and founder of lies because he told the first lie to Adam and Eve in the garden. Glory be to God. And so he, he is the founder. All right. So many people will follow after him, believing him to be the real thing. And, and some uh, uh, will actually follow after him uh, because uh, he's going to he the crown that he wears is a crown of victory. Uh, people are going to believe that he is uh, the victor, that he is victorious because of the way that he has been arrayed and adorned and how he is personifying himself. Uh, so don't be deceived uh, uh, into thinking that just because somebody comes on TV that they are born of God. Uh, don't be deceived into thinking uh, that just because a person ha is an orator and can speak very well that they are born of God. You better look at the lifestyle. Uh, and if the lifestyle doesn't line up with Christ, you better leave it alone. All right. And so God has given us ways to discern and detect. And this is why I'm trying to uh, uh, educate you today on his ways. All right. But we'll be right back after another break. God bless you. are back. We're headed down the Homewood Street now. Uh, we want to uh, get right into uh, the second rider. The second rider was a uh, rider on a red horse, right? First a horse was white, second horse is red, and he is um, the creator of war, and he uh, is ready for battle, uh, and he's indicative of a massive slaughter. Glory be to God. And so uh, this uh, second horse, uh, because uh, uh, he is red, um, a lot of blood will be shed. And so, uh, you know, the Bible talks about uh, blood coming up to the horse's bridle. And so therefore, a lot of people uh, are going to be slaughtered during this particular time, right? And so the third horse uh, is a uh, the rider is a rider of a black horse, right? Uh, the black horse symbolizes famine uh, and um, also uh, depicts uh, a uh, food merchant, uh, as it were, and he will be carrying uh, a balance uh, weighing. Uh, of scales, and uh, when you read 
uh, the uh, verse 5 concerning the third seal, you'll see that the black horse um, uh, uh, rider carried a pair of balances in his hand. And then uh, he said, uh, uh, these balances uh, are talking about um, uh, food costs, a uh, measure of wheat and barley, uh, a penny. And, 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 and then he, he's talking about how uh, oil and, and wine, see thou not hurt the oil and wine, because these are going to be more valuable, and so they're going to cost you even more. So then the, the cost and the price of food products are going to skyrocket. And it's going, people are not going to be able to afford uh, to buy food. And, and we see indications of that even now. Uh, uh, people are having some difficult times, and we are having a, 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 to try to see that everybody gets food to eat. Glory be to God, to sustain them. And so it's very important to see how these four horsemen the, and the riders fit into the scheme of things that are going on in the earth, so much so that you cannot deny that this man heard from God. Glory be to God. So, so let's look at, look at him, this, this uh, uh, third rider. And so now that brings us to the fourth rider and the final horse, all right? That uh, uh, is riding a pale or Ashton, a uh, pale green horse. Glory be to God. Uh, they could have gave him another name other than Green. Uh, my last name is Green. That's why uh, <laughs> it's so shocking to me. A pale green horse. Glory. And so uh, uh, this rider uh, uh, is the rider who is signifying death. And, and this is perhaps one of the reasons why you find uh, uh, most of the time when people uh, have funerals, uh, uh, last rites, uh, or people in mourning, uh, they wear black uh, because that horse signifies death. And so uh, this uh, uh, horse not only signifies death, he is accompanied by uh, uh, what is known as Hades, which is uh, another term for hell. He is accompanied by hell. And uh, they are given uh, the authority over one quarter of the earth to destroy, to kill with the sword, with famine and plague, and by means of the beast of the earth. You're going to find a lot of these animals, uh, a lot of these beasts that we uh, have so much domesticated are going to uh, uh, get out of character. And we're not going. Uh, we're going to be uh, perplexed as to why all of this is happening. But it is biblical uh, that it is happening, and so uh, therefore we we must pay attention also to those things also. So now, in studying these four uh, uh, writers, you cannot evade the signs of the time that we are living in, which could be viewed as the harbinger. All right. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, research and study uh, concerning uh, the harbinger, uh, those which were related to the four blood moons, which have already occurred, uh, which the Bible also spoke of also. So these four blood moons have already occurred because the Bible in the same book, Revelation, says uh, that in that great notable day, the blood, the sun is going to be turned to blood. Or the, um, or the moon is going to be turned to blood. And so as a result, uh, there were four blood moons that preceded uh, this event. So therefore, uh, we are just, uh, we're on the verge. Uh, we, we, we're on, at the eve of the culmination of the age, so close that I would admonish you not to take this uh, uh, lightly and not to examine yourself especially your readiness uh, to, to come face to face with the maker and creator of the earth. And so you have to understand something. It doesn't matter what people say uh, that he's not, uh, he is not that, and they don't believe, they don't believe that. He didn't say he was coming because they believe. 
He said he's coming anyway because he has already announced his coming. So therefore, it is important for you to believe God. And Isaiah have already prophesied whose report will you believe? And so therefore, I'm going to believe the report of the Lord because that is the only true and genuine report out there. And I admonish you, amen, to start living and walking in such a way that you redeem the time, knowing that the time is short, knowing that I cannot continue, amen, sending like I always did, like I did, amen, before I got knowledge, before the word of God was made available to me, before the word of God was preached to me. There's no nation now that have not received uh, access to the word of God, have not been preached the word of God. So therefore, we are without excuse. Uh, when God comes, when in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ to judge the earth again, we are without excuse. We are, and I'm teaching it right here again on today. So those of you who hear my voice, you are now accountable unto God. You cannot tell God, I didn't know, I didn't hear I, I, as to why I'm not prepared as to why I'm not ready, amen, to give an account for the deeds done in this body. So we, we have to take this serious. And so therefore, we must get the word of God correct. We must get it straight from the word of God, from the Bible, because it's going down and you need to hear the truth. I don't have time to tickle your ears. I don't have time, amen, to dress it up for you. I got to tell it like it is, except you repent, you pe you're going to perish and find yourself in the lake of fire, in hell. And the Bible said there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And so therefore, this is the opportunity for you to get right. And if you don't know how to get right, you just, amen, uh, uh, follow this link and contact prayer and deliverance ministries. And we will teach you how to get yourself ready for the coming of the Lord. And then you will be able to say, even so, come Lord Jesus. I don't have to discern the times anymore because whenever he comes, I'm already ready. I'm ready for him. Amen. I'm ready for his coming. I'm ready to stand. Amen. Before God and declare that, Lord, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. Amen. Henceforth, I'm ready for the crown that was promised to me. Glory be to God. Amen. The crown that you're going to get going to fit your head. It ain't going to wobble. It's not going to be too big or too small. It's custom made in heaven. And I want to see his face. Amen. Dare to look forever of it, sing forever of his saving grace on the streets of glory. I'll be home at last ever to rejoice. So God bless you, saints of God. Amen. Get yourself right. Amen. I'm about out of time now, but I've got to reveal to you the coming of the Lord. And so then you ought to be shouting if you are saved and a Christian today, even so, come Lord Jesus. I'm out of time. God bless you. See you on next time. Don't forget to join us on Sunday morning. Amen. For our worship at 1130. Amen. Until then, shalom.